requires uh, actually quite a brisk force. So that may want to actually not make that quite as big, but as you can see, it is definitely kicking in. And that is actually probably too big now that I think about it. Let's make it more like five. And we'll leave it at that for now. Make it const again because there's no way we can change it once it's on my phone without actually rebooting it. Okay. The one other option we would have on the phone is possibly to use a debug menu, but I don't think it actually works on iPhone. I have never tried that. Alright, so I'm quite happy with that for the boost. Now let's look at the uh, roll, which is the other axis. So it will be a very similar, very similar thing that we're going to be checking. Okay, the roll is here. Alright, so when we look at the roll, it also has a left and right quadrant thing going on. Um, so we're just going to get rid of that stuff. It's called touched. So we're in the right hand quadrant, left hand quadrant is touched and you're rolling. And there's also a state where you're stopping. This one's a little bit simpler. So it has a roll force. And this is going to be state quadrant, state, we're just going to call this one state touched. And this one purely takes the starting in, so it's very similar to the, it's actually almost identical to the boost, but it has a slow down state because of the way it works. Okay, so as you can see, I commented this out during the porting process. So it's got a whole bunch of tests in here, which I think are kind of invalid. I think you should be able to roll while you're boosting because think of it less as um, using your wheels and more as using the jet to change your direction. So we'll take those out. That's the old input model. model. And the weapons quadrant test as well, we're not going to use right now. And we're going to reduce these tests down to a single test. So it used to be that you had to move your hand from the right to the left part of the screen, crossing a quadrant in order to start moving, but that's obviously horrible. So we're just going to make it look for whether you're in the left, whether you're in the left quadrant, and if you are in the left quadrant, then you can start rolling. And that will become touched. And because it only applies this on the one axis, that should work fine in combination with our other boost. So it's probably going to suffer from the same issue with the um, current point not being initialized, so we need to remember that. So it probably suffer from exactly the same issue. So that will fix that. So this test is kind of interesting when he's touched up. If the player is boosting, we don't want to reset his linear velocity in mid-air. It feels funny. Oh, I see. Okay. So what was happening here is if the player was going up and he was actually moving across, we didn't want to stop him accelerating instantly. So that's actually quite an interesting test. And we may have to change these values slightly um, in order to make it feel nice. But we'll leave that in for now because it's obviously put in there for a very good reason. And this is doing a set linear velocity on the x-axis, that's fine. Now let's look a little bit more at this apply force. Um, the applied force is using the touch delta on the x-axis, so we may have to change the sign. And it's using another sort of fudgy variable here, so we, we'll just make that into a float. We'll call it delta xl factor. And we can make that one to begin with because it's going to be basically pixels. I think that should be all we need to do. And I might just pop a couple of trace messages in here too. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to disable the ones in the boost. Because this is now working. So let's just disable these for now. Oh, I actually comment out too much stuff there. It's because the indents. Misleading, misleading in indents are always bad. Okay. I think that's the uh, when the 
last one. I might actually leave it, leave that particular one in there because that's quite good to know that you're in that state, even when the other one is going on. But we'll get rid of the ones that print out every frame, and that one is also quite valuable to know. Okay, so let's go back to the roll. Oops, I didn't pick the right one there. Keep hitting the wrong one. Okay, so now let's roll. Update. Ah, sorry, not state update, just called update. It's starting to get late. Okay. So, we'll just say what the force is. Alright. And also when we are entering our new states. These are important messages to us. So, and also in state slowing down, we can also go into state no touch. Let's try that quickly in the simulator and see how we go. And once we get this one working relatively well, we should try it out on the iPhone and see what we get. Okay, so here he can roll now. Okay, this is interesting. Um, from what I'm seeing, his roll is actually totally whack. And we should also not allow you to boost downwards. But other than that, I think it's actually working quite well. Yeah, the uh, boost needs to be clamped to zero and it's it's getting exceedingly large values going on in there. So there's still quite a bit of work to do there. Okay, the first thing we need to do is change the sign on the roll. So it's applying it negative. So it really, really doesn't need to be doing that. And the next thing I wanna do is make the boost not able to give negative downward force because you really don't want that it's a jetpack it's not going to be pushing you down so only if the final force no, it's still coming out for some reason if the final force greater than zero from zero we may have to change the sign of this computation to less than zero but we'll try that first of all it's a bit too late for me to actually figure out which one it definitely should be. Let's try that and see how it works. Okay. Now we're going up. I think that roll is actually quite responsive. Um, the boost is giving some slightly crazy values, so we're really jumping very high. But that's probably what you want on when you're on the phone, to get a nice responsive thing. So I'm just controlling him entirely using the mouse now, and it's actually working out pretty well. The small movement I can control them in quite a fine grained fashion. And just by dragging, just by moving what should be my finger. It doesn't seem to always grab the input, so that's a bit of a worry. So we're gonna need to do something about that. And sometimes he seems to just sort of jump around pretty randomly, like there, I moved my mouse sideways, not up and down at all. It almost seems like the force that's being applied is wrong, like that shouldn't be happening. I'm moving it only sideways. But this is pretty good. So um, once we tweak this a little bit, we should probably get a very similar motion to what we want on the iPhone. So I'm going to finish this off here for now. And um, thanks for watching. And I hope you've learned something from this. And I hope it's been interesting for you too. See you later.